Good morning. Welcome. My name is Mary and together we are going to think about the Garden of Gethsemane. In Mark chapter 14 from verse 32, we see Jesus in the garden communing with his Father. But as we listen to him pray, we become aware of the fact that he is deeply troubled. As he thinks about the cup of suffering which he must drink, he says to his disciples, I am overwhelmed to the point of death. Why was that? He, the Son of God, had come down to us to be the Saviour of the world, to be our Saviour, and he wants to fulfil that mission. But surely there is a way other than the cross. Indeed, at various times during his life of service and self-denial, Jesus considered the cost of our salvation. In the wilderness, he was tempted by Satan to find an easier way. And again, through Peter, he was tempted to reject the way of the cross, and he cried out, Get behind me, Satan! For if he was to be our Saviour, it was necessary for him to suffer, to suffer the agony of separation from God, the punishment which should be ours for our sin. But here in this moment of very human struggle, he calls out to God as a child might call out to his father, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Again and again he calls out with the same request, but there is no other way. He will drink this bitter cup. He wants what his father wants, and he declares, Yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus had brought his disciples to the garden to be with him in prayer. But when he returns, he finds them not praying, but sleeping. Three times he agonizes. Three times he returns and finds them sleeping. He is concerned for them. How would they be able to combat the very real temptations that would face him during his trial and crucifixion? The path before them would be a difficult one. So with a heavy heart, Jesus asks, couldn't you watch one hour? And they were without excuse. When he himself needs spiritual strength, he knows he will find it in God through prayer. And so he urges them to follow his example. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing that they had promised to follow him to death. But Jesus also knows the flesh is weak. And scripture tells their sad story. When the trial did come, they failed. They ran, they denied Jesus, and they hid. They did not have the spiritual resources they needed, resources found only in prayer. On the other hand, Jesus embraces the way of suffering set before him and says with divine strength from God, rise, let us go, here comes my betrayer. As Christians, we too are called to live lives of self-service and sacrifice for others. So there is a lesson for us here too, for me. Throughout my life, I too have declared my intention to follow Jesus just as those disciples did. Yet there have been times to my shame when I have lacked the spiritual resources I have needed and I have obeyed with a rebellious spirit in that inner place where only God sees. And so today, as we think about the words of Jesus to his disciples, I hear him speak tenderly to me. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Oh, that the cry of my heart, like that of Jesus, would be, not what I want, but what you want. Earlier in his ministry, Jesus had challenged his disciples and us to take up your cross daily and follow. And that's not easy. It requires self-denial and sometimes sacrifice. Let us take to heart the words of Jesus. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Let us pray. Lord, we confess our need of you. Our spirits are indeed willing. But sometimes when we call upon to walk a difficult path, we fail. We lack the spiritual resources necessary. Draw us ever into the place of prayer 
so that as we seek to follow you, we will have your strength to say, not my will, but yours.